in India, I wanted to be, it was like a dream come true for my adopted home of India to have my products there. from Indulge, the New Indian Express. And today we have with us Ms. Paula Bigon, the cosmetic cop herself. So Paula, thank you for staying awake past midnight for us. I'm sure it's past midnight by now. It's, uh, so it's, I, it's one in the morning here. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, first of all, congratulations for phase two. And tell me what are the new things that people can expect during phase two? Launching products in a new country uh, always is quite the process of registering and all of the regulatory things. And so I didn't want to wait. I'd already waited long enough. I've been living, you know, India has been part of my life for 14 years. And as soon as we were yeah. able to launch in India, I wanted to be, it was like a dream come true for my adopted home of India to have my products there. So we, we've been doing it in these phases so we could at least get started. So phase one was an initial group of products and now phase two fills in um, for anti-aging, for exfoliation, uh, boosters for some very effective bioactive ingredients. And then phase three will we'll bring the rest. And so yes. it's, it's really been, um, uh, just a, a way to get the products in. And now uh, we're two thirds of the way there with one third less yes. and we'll do that hopefully in June or July. So I'm sure, you know, like uh, even before you uh, started uh, selling here, there were people like a whole bunch of us who were like trying by, by all means possible to get Paula's Choice products back in India if someone was flying in, we would request them. So I just uh, like, would you tell us uh, what's this connection that you have with India? I know it's your adopted country and we love you here, but tell us why you have this connection exactly. My, 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 ex, my ex-husband is, uh, well, I mean, he's, I was gonna say was, I mean, he's still alive, but my ex-husband um, is Indian and we lived a great deal of the time in Bandra. Uh, he's uh, from uh, Mumbai and lived most of his life in Pune and Bandra. So uh, we spent a great deal of time. I had a, a home there. Um, I still consider India my home, family, friends. And, and, and in fact, I think one of the better parts of him was, in, was India. Yeah. He brought yeah. India to my life. I think I must have been India in another lifetime because I that I just took to, I, I took to my life in India in a way I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't expecting. I wasn't. And we are glad that you did. Uh, <laughs> you. So uh, the other thing that I want to quickly jump into is like, uh, I am sure you have spent a lot of time here and you must have heard a lot of things that people do to their skin, which is just not good. What are some of the myths that you wish to debunk? I know your, what your thoughts are on DIY, but I would just, since we are on this, I would want you to tell us like, what are the ways they're harming their skin and their skin barrier so, by doing what they're doing? The most, nothing is as damning for skin as irritating it or inflaming it. And what's in your kitchen with very few exceptions is either not helpful at all or causes irritation and inflammation. And irritation and inflammation makes acne worse, causes collagen breakdown, causes elastin breakdown, damages the barrier of skin, your protection to the world breaks down. The, the citruses, the yogurts, the honey, they're useless. There is no research no research showing any of that is beneficial for skin. The, the thing around turmeric drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Now, 
don't get me wrong. If you got a cut on your finger and you want to, and you're bleeding and you want to stem the bleeding, turmeric does have clotting factors. You want to slap some turmeric on it? That's fine. It also turns your skin a strange shade of yellow. You'll stop bleeding, but well, depending on how deep the cut is, but you'll stop. I don't want to say if you're, you know, you're, you might have to go to the hospital. I'm talking about a superficial cut. I don't yes. want to, yes, I don't want to, but, but this notion of doing turmeric as a skincare ingredient, and you, I'm, I'm looking at Indian women who have strong feelings about their skin color, and then they're using products like turmeric and it's staining their skin yellow. I don't even get it. No research about the benefit. Yeah. It, it's actually granular. Most turmeric is granular. It's actually rough on the skin and it, and it has no benefit. I <laughs> only use the, it's all about the research. It's all about skin physiology. Of if course. there's no facts behind it, if it's just, you know, when people say to me, well, my grandmother used it and my grandmother looked great. And I'm thinking, if you want to look like your grandmother, <laughs> I would do DIY too. Personally, <laughs> and I loved my grandmother. I know I'm 67. I know what my grandmother looked like at 67. And I don't want to look like that. Yes, if you absolutely. want to look like your grandmother, you do just what she did. Absolutely. But absolutely. we know now what the, we know so much about skin. We would be cheating our skin to not follow the facts, follow the research, not the myths, not the misleading information, not the trends, not the marketing stories, but the facts about what works and what doesn't for skin. Done. Thank you for putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing that I want to ask is when I attended the conference earlier also where you're, you're talking about picking products according to your skin type and not the seasons and not what other things are going on. So is there any easy way to determine your skin type per se? So the, pro yes, there is. The problem, well, the answer is yes and no. The problem is, is often the products we're using is causing our skin type, is causing us problems. If you're not protecting your skin from the sun, you're not protecting your skin from pollution, you're using, you know, jade rollers and wang shai and abrasive scrubs and derma rollers and your, you know, hot water, you're steaming your skin, you're using, DIY stuff that caught, you know, it, you know, witch hazel and, al you know, denatured alcohol. And, you know, often we cause our skin, th our, uh, the problems we want to avoid, we're making worse. Yeah. So yeah. until we stop doing the bad stuff, we really can't figure out because you might not have sensitive skin. You might not yeah. have red skin, but you're using products like you know, bar soaps and drying cleansers yeah. that cause it to be a problem. Absolutely. The other thing we Absolutely. do that's a problem um, is we use textures of products that are, the, are wrong for our skin type. So everybody thinks they need a moisturizer. And so because everybody thinks they need a moisturizer, they think it has to be creamy and lotion-y. You know, I have oily skin. I put a cream and lotion on. I'm like, an, I, I'm already an oil slick. I put a cream and a lotion on. I'm like, I can run a small country. I mean, I'm just, I, I'm even oilier than I was. So you have to use products according to, if you're oily, you have to use textures of products that are very thin and liquidy and yeah. fluid or very gel and light. And if you have dry skin, then you use the creams and the rich lotions. If you have oily skin and you're using moisturizers that are lotiony and creamy, you're going to have clogged pores, more acne, and more oily skin. When we are talking about Indian skin per se, and we are of so many shades here. Uh, yes, you, you are. <laughs> Actually, you I'm sorry. Ask the forgive yeah. me. Follow me. Ask no, the, no, I'm no. Sorry. But what I was going to say is, um, 
being Indian isn't a skin type. And, and actually more so than any country other than the United States, uh, the United States has Indians and Asians and South Africans and Kenyans and Ethiopians and South Americans. I mean, we have everybody, right? But in, in India, you you have, first of all, you have a large Asian population in, in the North. You have very dark black skinned Indians. You have very mocha, brown, gorgeous. You, I mean, you have, and then you have very white. I mean, you've got a range of people like yes. actually almost no other country I've been in. There is yeah. really nothing Indian about being Indian because <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's such a, it's such a divide, diverse range of skin tone. Absolutely, absolutely. So coming uh, to the question that I was asking is that, is there anything that we should, as people of color, refrain from using? Because there's this whole thing in the skincare world about how people with brown skin or skin of color cannot use AHAs and this and this concentration and that concentration. Does that really matter? No, I don't know where that comes from. I don't even know what to say. Physiologically, it, it has no meaning. Um, first of all, AHAs and BHAs have been around forever and ever and ever. And the research about them is, goes back decades. And there is no skin color or ethnic background where AHA or BHA wouldn't have benefit. And as a matter of fact, for somebody of color, where we're talking about browner skin. So one of the things about brown skin, when it has any dryness, is it gets ashy. Yes. Now, Caucasians, when they get dry skin, they might feel rough and they might not like, they might not have a good glow to their skin, but they don't necessarily get discoloration. Darker skin tones, when they get, when it's dry, they can be ashy. You want to help skin do cell turnover. And that's what AHAs, alpha hydroxy acid, which is usually glycolic or lactic acid, yeah. or BHA, which is salicylic acid. Now keep in yeah. mind, BHA is related to aspirin. Yes. Right? Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, right? And people of color can take aspirin and do just fine. You can put it on your skin and do just fine. And when you have a healthy microbiome, you know, the microbiome of your face, your skin, it makes lactic acid. Your skin when it's healthy, my skin when it's healthy, but of course, because of pollution and sun damage and a million other reasons, it's very hard to have a healthy microbiome. But when you have a healthy microbiome, it makes lactic acid for you. you with your skin color, me with my skin color. So the notion that you can't use it, it's already there. It would be there if we had healthier skin. It, it makes no, yes. the research isn't there. The facts aren't there. I don't know where they come up with this shit, but it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not it's in the Instagram, side. Paula. It's a, awesome. I do, stay off of Instagram. It doesn't, <laughs> make, it, it doesn't make sense. Physiologically, yes. it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, quickly, some of uh, what are some of the products in phase two that we can shop for, like which we didn't put in before with our, your la last when you, the phase one had happened. What are the new things that we can look forward to? The, the one that I'm most excited about. Well, I love that we launched azelaic acid was one of the in phase one. Azelaic acid is um, is one of those superhero ingredients, especially for women of color because of it not only is an incredible anti-inflammatory, but it also has incredible ability to improve healthy skin color and, and reduce the negative, not negative, but the uh, abnormal skin color caused from sun damage and pollution damage. The other thing is our 1% retinol booster. 
Retinol is one of those superhero ingredients. It's been around and been researched for over 50 years. It's an incredible cell communicating ingredient. It tells skin cells to behave like young skin cells. And that's, if you can tolerate a 1% concentration of retinol and you have acne, advanced signs of aging, um, you have um, uh, sun damage. If you can use a 1% concentration of retinol, and a lot of people can, some people can't, I can't use retinol. I'm one of those people who is sensitized to retinol. I hate that I'm sensitized to retinol. I'd love to be able to use it, but my skin's doing fine, even though I can't use it. But if you can, it's, it can be very significant for skin. Um, the other thing is uh, more of my antioxidant serums. And as I mentioned, one of the major ways to fight pollution damage is by giving your skin antioxidants. The other product we launched is my C25, which is a 25% yes. concentration of vitamin C. So when skin is healthy and not sun damaged, vitamin C is the number one, number one. It is the main antioxidant that would be in your skin if your skin was healthy and could make enough of it. But again, because of sun damage and pollution damage, it can't. So this is a 25% concentration of vitamin C. And so not only is it a good antioxidant, but there's some pretty uh, convincing research about it improving skin uh, tone, helping skin make normal skin color because sun damage makes abnormal skin color, not normal skin color, right? We don't have our baby color when we were young because of sun damage, it changes, it gets darker. Um, for uh, women of color, it gets darker. For white women, it gets mottled. It, lose, it gets kind of a yellowy speckled kind of, Yeah. let me tell you, it ain't pretty. Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just telling you as a Caucasian woman, it, it, it isn't, it doesn't work. Sun damage doesn't look good on anybody. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paula, and for staying awake past midnight. Follow me. I think I could stay, I think we could stay awake for a while over a really nice <laughs> martini someplace in India.